this is what the question is the polynomial 4x raised to the power 4 plus ax square plus 11x plus b this polynomial where a and b are constants is denoted by p of x it's given that p of x is divisible by x square minus x plus 2 that means this is a factor and the remainder is zero okay now, given this information, we need to find the values of A and B. Now, the first thing is, can we use the remainder theorem here? We can't because it's not a linear factor. That's not going to work. So the other option that we've got is that we use long division. Let's do that. Four. x raised to the power 4. The x cube term is missing. Be careful about that. So that's 0x cube plus 11, no, sorry, plus ax square plus 11x plus b. This is what the polynomial is. We want to divide it by x square minus x plus 2. You have to do this division and then find the remainder, put that equal to zero. And that should somehow give you the values for A and B. Let's try this. What do you multiply X square by to get four X raised to the power four? You multiply it by four X squared. That's the first thing that you have. Four X squared into this whole thing. That is four X raised to the power four minus four X cube plus 8x squared. Change the signs. This is minus, plus, minus. This gets cancelled. And we get 4x cubed minus... No, now, this is important. So you've got ax squared and minus 8x squared. What you're going to do is you're going to write it like this. What's the coefficient of x squared? The coefficient of x squared is a minus 8. So write it like this. A minus 8. This whole thing is the coefficient of x squared. All right. Now, what's the next thing here? 11x. And then we have plus b. What do you multiply x squared by to get 4x cubed? You multiply it by 4x. Now, 4x into this whole thing, that gives us 4x cubed minus 4x squared plus 8x. You have to be careful that you're writing like terms under like terms. So x squared below x squared, x below x. Otherwise, you'll get confused by that. So we're done with this. Now change the signs. This becomes minus. This becomes plus. This also becomes minus. This gets cancelled. What do we get now? A minus 8 plus 4. A minus 8 plus 4. That gives us A minus 4. So the coefficient of x squared that you're getting here is A minus 4 whole times x squared. 11x minus 8x. 11x minus 8x. That's going to be 3x. Then you've got plus b outside. What do you multiply x squared by to get a minus 4 times x squared? You multiply it by a minus 4. x squared multiplied by a minus 4 is going to give you a minus 4 whole x squared. Now, this is why it's really important that you write it like this in this form. Because if you had written it like this, a x squared minus 4x squared it's very likely that you would have written you would have written just a here because x square times a gives you x square but you also need minus 4 so you would have missed out on that if you wrote it separately like this so don't do that write it together like this and that will make sure that you don't do this mistake a minus 4 whole times x square this is the term that you're getting here. Okay. Now, 
we have to multiply a minus 4 with this whole thing. What does that give us? a minus 4 into x square. And then a minus 4 into minus x. What's that? So you've got a minus sign here. Put that here. Minus into a minus 4 times x. Then 2 into a minus 4. That's 2a minus 8. This is your constant term. 2a minus 8. What do we do now? We change the signs again. This becomes minus. This whole thing gets cancelled. This becomes plus. So 3 plus a minus 4. 3 plus a minus 4. Right? This 3 and then a minus 4. What does that give us? That gives us a minus 1. So you have a minus 1 times x plus b plus 2a minus 8. b plus 2a minus 8. This is the constant term that you're getting. Okay. Now, what multiplied by x, what multiplied by x square is going to give you a minus 1 times x. Now, you can see this degree is lower than this degree, so we can't go any further. This is our remainder. Now, since x square minus x plus 2 was a factor, the remainder has to be equal to 0. Now, here's the trick. This remainder has to be zero for all values of x. No matter what value of x you input here, this remainder should be always equal to zero. Okay? What that means is this coefficient of x, this should also be zero. Because when this becomes zero, this multiplied by x is going to make it zero. And this constant term, this should also be equal to zero. So both of them individually have to be equal to zero. All right. And that gives you two equations. A minus one equals zero. That gives you A equals one. That's the value of A that we've got. And then we have B plus two A minus eight. You input uh, that equals zero. You put the value of a here in this equation. That's b plus two into one minus eight equals zero, and you get b equal to six from this. So a equals one and b equals six. These are the two answers that we're getting from this. Does that make sense? So the key part here is writing these coefficients in proper form because that's going to make your calculations easier, make your working easier. And then the remainder that you get at the end, you put every term individually equal to zero as in X term, you put that equal to zero and the constant term, you put that equal to zero. And from that, you get those unknowns that you have to find there. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I think I there, there's something wrong that we've done here. We missed, so nobody pointed that out. We have I haven't changed this sign at the end. So when we did this uh, last edition, uh, maybe it got undone for some reason and I could I pressed some button so there was a minus sign here right so there was not it was not plus we had to subtract it from that so this becomes b minus 2a plus 8 okay so there's a sign error there b minus 2a plus 8 and that gives us b minus 2a plus 8 here and this is b minus 2 into a plus 8. Now, b plus 6 goes to the other side and becomes minus 6. The value of b is not 6. It's actually minus 6. Sorry about that. This is what we get. Okay, so I missed that minus sign here. This is what it should be. 
Is this clear to everyone? Any problems with this? Or you're too tired for questions now? Okay, so let's do this last part and then we end. When A and B have these values, find the real roots of this equation. Now, this is pretty straightforward once you've done this. Real roots of the equation, P of X equal to zero. What's P of X? P of X is that polynomial, 4X raised to the power of four plus AX square plus 11X plus B equals zero. This is the equation that we need to solve. We already have the values for A and B now. A is one, so this is X squared. B is minus six, so we can put minus six here. We need to solve this equation. Now it's a quartic equation. We don't know how to solve this. So what we do is we factorize this. We've already done all the work, all the hard work above. We know the factors. One factor is X squared minus X plus two. We put that here. What about the other factor? This is the other factor, 4X squared plus 4X. 4X squared plus 4X. And then you have plus A minus four, the value of A is one. Then minus four, so that's plus one minus four. That becomes minus three there. And this equals zero. So we have these two factors. We put them equal to zero one by one, X squared minus X plus two equals zero or 4x squared plus 4x minus three equals zero. What does the first one give us? Can we factorize this? Uh, we can't. We put this in the quadratic formula, minus into minus one plus minus square root of, I think it's not going to be possible. Uh, let's just write it down. Minus one whole squared minus four into one into two divided by two into one. You have a negative number inside the square root, so there are no real solutions from here. Yeah, we're only looking for real roots. Uh, let's solve the other one. Can we factorize this one? We probably can. Four and three, that's 12, six and two. We could use six and two, four X squared plus six X minus two X minus three equals zero. This gives us two X into two X plus three minus one into two X plus three equals zero. You have two factors, two X minus one and two X plus three equals zero. X equals one over two or X equals minus three over two. These are the two solutions that you get from this equation. All right. And that's it, that's polynomials done. We are done with all the concepts that we needed to cover in this and, we're, and we've done enough practice as well. You can do more questions now from the worksheet. If you have any problems, as I said earlier, what you have to do is you have to take a picture of your work, working poster in the WhatsApp group and ask your question. Once you have, uh, Show, once you have posted your working as well, I'll be able to tell you where you're going wrong and suggest you what you could do there. So that's something that you can use as well. You can post your questions on the WhatsApp group.